Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James, and we are here for an unboxing and assembly of the brand new Flightline 1400 millimeter OV-10A Bronco. Finally, uh, Flightline, it's been a while since our last release. Uh, they did the two Mini Dora and Mustang, but the last big one was the Corsair. But finally, we're back with their third uh, twin engine aircraft, and it is this stunning OV-10 Bronco in front of me. So the OV-10 Bronco, as you guys may know, still uh, in service to this day in great numbers. Developed back in the 60s for, as a twin turboprop light attack and observation aircraft can carry up to 3,200 pounds of uh, munitions, and we definitely have some ordnance on there coming out of the box, but I always looked at the Bronco as like the prop version of the A-10 Warthog, if you had to put it there. She can just do all the dirty work, and this version of her looks absolutely stunning up close. The fit and finish on her is fantastic, and I can't wait to get into this unboxing and build. So for those of us who are joining us for our unboxing and assembly videos, the way we structure it is in four parts. We will do an unboxing where you'll see every piece come out. We will talk about the spec, so we'll go through what's inside as far as electronics and things like that. Then we will do a step-by-step -step assembly, and you're definitely going to want to watch that uh, watch that with me as you build yours because there are some things in the manual that I just do a little differently to help you out. They don't mention certain things that I realize after building it, oh, I should have did this first, so we'll do that. And then at the end, I'll plug her in on the table here. We'll walk around her and just talk a little more about her. So guys, that's it for my opening spiel. Let's get started with the unboxing. All right, guys, let's get started with the unboxing. As you can see here, the Flightline box looking good. It's the darker version of the free wing boxes. Everything packaged nice and perfectly. You shouldn't have any problems uh, with any of your foam bits inside. Pulling it out, you'll get your manual first. Then the first thing I pulled out of the box I saw were the two sponsons. That's where your ordnance is going to attach to, and those get glued on on the main fuselage a little later. Then you have your two wings, and one thing I love about this Bronco, those wings, once assembled, they come off outside of the motor, so you'll only ever have to remove these wing portions, and they have a ribbon cable on it. They have two servo covers. You're going to have your outboard flaps on this portion of the wing, and your aileron, as well as your light, so you'll have the nav lights. Uh, that's what that ribbon cable will connect into the blue box in the middle. And again, they look nicely and detailed, and the decals are already pre-applied. Next thing I pulled out was the external fuel tank, so that'll go on at the very bottom, and that just is held on with magnets. Then you have your center wing section. This is where all the action happens. When we get to the assembly uh, portion of this build, of this unboxing video, you'll see that we have to plug all this into the blue box. We'll take you through that, but you can see, again, nicely detailed, this section does have um, a lot of plastic bits on it, which is nice, but also you have your inboard flaps and you can see the servo covers there. Really nice fit and finish on this. Moving on, you get your two baggies will be in here. So baggie one's gonna have all your peripherals, all your antennas, pitot tubes, things like that. All the stuff you'll glue on at the very end. Then your next baggie will have all your other bits. So your control rods, uh, linkages, glue is in there and all those things to help you finish uh, putting this model together. Then you got your spinners and your props. Then we're going to take out our horizontal stabilizer and there'll be two leads coming out of it. One for the LED up top and one for the servo which controls the elevator as you can see. Again nicely finished. Then you have your four rocket pods or LAU-59s I believe they are. Launch adapter units and they look great. They will attach to the sponsons via the MWS railing system like most free wing and flight line stuff you know. So uh, really nicely done. Love that they included those. Then you get to the big meat. You got your two booms. Each one's gonna have a rudder servo attached with servo covers on there. Again, the detail on the graphics are already done, the decals. And you can see your motors are going to be included in there and everything you're going to need to uh, finish this off. Nice plastic bits, landing, the main landing gears are attached to them. Really, really well done. And the last part is your main fuselage portion. So that'll be your nice middle section, has the nose gear attached, again the canopy, 
already on. Really a lot of space when you open the canopy, you can see inside there. This baby looks awesome once finished, but that'll do it guys for the unboxing. Here it is all laid out on the table. I can't wait to build it, but first let's go through the specs. Now for the specifications on the Flightline OV-10A Bronco, she has a 1400 millimeter wingspan or just a tad over 55 inches. And as you'll see compared side by side to the P-38, which was a 1600 millimeter wingspan, she's a lot bigger, larger presence cause she's longer. She's 1390 millimeters long, which is just a tad under 55 inches. As for the electronics inside, she will have two brushless outrunner motors. They are 3530 860kV. They are powered by two 30 amp ESCs with a 5 amp UBEC, and they are swinging 9507 three bladed props, one standard, one reversed. They do counter rotate, which is always nice. You have 10 servos throughout, all digital servos, 9, 9 gram, and 117 gram. The material is EPO with a lot of plastic parts, guys. They did a really fine job with the detailing on this Bronco. Everything from the ordnance to the cockpit detail to the servo covers and all the peripherals. And the recommended batteries are two 4S 3300s to 4000s. I think she'll take even up to 5000s. There's a lot of canopy space in there, guys. And you're going to want a six channel uh, receiver. So that'll do it for the specs. Let's head on to a step-by-step -step assembly. All right, pilots, before we get started assembling your OV-10, this is a little addendum we added later. That's why I look different, everything looks different, because we've come to find that people are having a little trouble wiring up their OV-10. So we're gonna stick this part in here now. You see an exploded view, and we're gonna go over what's already plugged into the blue box and what you're gonna need to plug in to the blue box and what you don't need to plug into the blue box from the center wing section. So let's get started. All right, guys, first things first, let's just talk quickly about the blue box and exactly what's on it and what's going to be, um, you know, there are basically four main categories to the blue box. Let's talk about those. So as you can see, taking a look at the front, I, I break it down to four. You have two pronged uh, holes for servo leads. These are all your light ports. So they are going to control um, the type of light you want to plug in. So you have a triple flash port, a uh, double flash, takeoff light port, two strobe ports, and then two light ports, which just mean if you plug a light into that, the light will always be on. So this top corner section is just for your lights. Going below, these, these ports, you'll see receiver. Everything coming out of here is what's going to go into your receiver. Because remember, a multifunction control board, the idea behind it is you can plug a lot of things in and, you know, and sort of like a Y lead, bring it out in one shot so you can get you know that's the whole basis behind it so anything plugged into here is what you will be putting into your receiver and there's aileron elevator rudder gear flap and an aux one which could be a throttle channel if you want but basically those six ports you can see on the side here side view um, those all go to your receiver then the third section is your two big ribbon cables so as it pertains to the ov10a you're plugging in, when you plug in the ribbon, they are going to, both ribbons are going to be for both outer wing sections. So everything having to do with the outer wings, since you can take the outer wing off for transportation, is going to be included in the ribbon cable. So that's a nav light on each side, uh, your, one of your outboard flaps on each side, and one aileron on each side is going to be controlled through the ribbon box. Then the far right side, that's going to be basically everything else. So you can plug in control services. If your plane had gear doors, um, nose gear, nose steering, things like that are all on the side. So you can see going down the line here, we have double stage door with two ports, single stage door. This is your throttle channel or your auxiliary one. So you could do anything in those. Nose steering, then three gear ports. So if you had a nose gear and two mains, that's what you plug in there, two rudders, and two elevators. So that's inherently your entire blue box. Now, let's get to how it pertains to the OV-10. So first things first, when you pull out the center fuselage section of your OV-10, your blue box is gonna be on the, included on the battery tray, and it is gonna be, you know, it's already gonna be inside. Now I tell you, first things first, 
unscrew the four screws that are for your battery tray and pull it out and just take a look. This is how you should see uh, everything plugged in and we'll explain it uh, coming out now. So first things first, as I had said about the light ports, you have your two, these are the two, two prong servo leads, just a red and black wire have to do with LEDs. So the first one is your bottom strobe, that's on the OV-10, that's plugged into the triple flash port. And then you have your nose light on the OV-10. That's plugged into the takeoff light. The takeoff light on the MCBE, that's what allows the light to turn on and off, off with the nose gear. So when your gear is retracted, your light is off or your light is on. And then when your gear goes up, your light turns off. That's all that's plugged in there. Then now we'll jump to this side. The only two servos that should, the only two leads that should be plugged in on this side are for your nose steering. That's for the servo up here that's steering your nose and your nose gear itself, the actual retract that goes up and down. And you can see they're plugged in together. Now going around to the other side, quick, you're going to have four leads coming out of the receiver port. So this is what these four are going to go to your receiver. You will see aileron, rudder, landing gear, and flap. There is not an elevator lead coming out of the blue box. So that's something you could take note of. The elevator lead that comes through the fuse, eventually, that's in the center wing right now, that's going to go direct to your receiver. So they're telling you, so this should tell you right off the bat, these are what are going to go to direct to your receiver, but we'll get to that because one of them actually will not either. It's going to be the flap, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So now let's go over to your center wing section. So now I have an exploded view here. This is everything coming out of your center wing as you will get it. And it looks like a mess. And that's why we like the blue box because it's going to be able to hide all these wires in the back of the fuselage. But first things first, you have your two ribbon cables. Again, they're going to control everything that plugs into the outer wing section. And those are the easiest to plug into the blue box. Uh, when you're ready, they just plug in here like so. Now, what else do we not need that uh, having to do with the blue box? You're going to have two of your XT60s. These are coming off of both ESCs into the motors. So that's where you plug in your batteries. And one of them has your UBEC off of it. Now, this UBEC has a lead coming off of it. Now, for some reason, I guess people at the factory are getting, uh, people getting these say that they have a throttle um, sticker on it. This is not your throttle. I don't know why they did that. The lead coming off the UBEC, this is what's going to give your receiver power. So this is the lead that could plug into any open port on your receiver. So when you're, so this is the last thing you, you uh, plug in before you plug in your batteries um, to bind up or anything like that. That's just your UBEC power, you know, so keep, take note of that. Not needed for the blue box. Now we come over to all the servo leads that come out. What you should see, first things first, your throttle. These are already wide together. This is a big Y lead. This can go directly into your throttle port. This is coming from both motors, uh, both ESCs attached to both motors. Then you're going to have your one elevator, elevator lead. Now, if you wanted to, you could add another plug into your elevator on the, on the blue box, go direct to your receiver here, and plug this into an, the elevator port on the blue box, but you don't need to. You can go direct to your receiver with that. There's more than enough length for where we recommend you store your receiver, which is in the back of that main fuselage. So that can go direct to receiver. Now you will see you have two rudder ports, two rudder leads, that's for both rudder servos on the twin boom aircraft. Those will get plugged in to the blue box. And again, mind your polarity on the blue box. You see it at the bottom. Positive on one side, po all positives go to the right if you're looking at your blue box this way. So positive to the right. So you'd put your rudders in the two rudder ports, here and here. And again, we'll take these out and we'll do it in the real aircraft in a second, but I just want to show you. So rudder. Then you have two landing gears. So this is for both main gears coming out of each boom. So you will have two open ports left on the gear because your nose gear is already plugged in, as we showed you, and your nose steering is already plugged in. So you'll plug in a landing gear here, 
and you'll plug in a landing gear here. So again, throttle, elevator, not plugged in. Now the last, there's three more leads left. Hold on, you gotta show me. Oh, which ones? I'm the sorry. The ones you just did, there you go. I think Here we go. Walking. All right. Go. So now you have, you should have three leads left in the explanation. One is another light. This is for the strobe on the top of the elevator. So on the blue box, it's up to you. If you don't want this light to strobe, you could plug it into the light port. If you want it to strobe, you could plug it into the strobe light or you'd have the double flash open. I had just plugged it into the strobe light on mine. And now finally you have your two flat leads, okay? Now this is where people um, are getting the most confused and I get it. Remember, this OV-10 has four servo leads, two inboard flaps, which are here. These are what you're holding, your inboard flap leads for your center wing. Your outboard flaps are attached to the ribbon cables. Okay, they're a part of the outer wing. That's why for transportation, you could take the outer wing and off, on and off, because you just have your ribbon cables. So you're gonna take the included Y lead, it's a tri lead, if you will, and you're gonna take two of the open ports on it, and you're gonna plug in your flaps here. Let's make sure our polarity's correct. Boom. So now your two flap leads are connected to your Y, okay? So that explains everything coming out of your MCB, of, of your center wing and going into the blue box. So the only thing coming out of the center wings, the only things that go into the blue box are your two rudder leads, your two landing gears, and your strobe light from the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, now I'm gonna plug this from here and now we're gonna show it on the already done uh, blue box on the OB-10. All right, so now back to the center fuselage here. You see everything that's already plugged in to the uh, blue box. Now, this is the reason we take the screws off the battery tray because you gotta, you gotta get everything plugged in through this hole on the top of the center wing, on the top of the fuselage from the center wing. So you, by taking off your screws, this allows you to bring the blue box up as high as you can so that now you have access to get, to get everything plugged in that you're gonna need plugged in. So, as we said from here, as we said before, first things first, let's get the four leads that we know, the five leads that we know that go direct to your blue box plugged in first. And that is your two landing gear leads and your two, and your two rudder leads. And then we need that light. So this is our strobe from our horizontal. Two rudders, two landing gear, you already had the nose gear, already had the nose steering, and you should see three lights plugged in. Yeah. Now, the last two things that go into the blue box are your ribbon cables. So get your ribbon cables plugged in. Because again, once you plug all these in, you're never going to have to unplug them again. Because everything you know, unless you really wanted to take the whole thing apart. Okay. Now, again, everything that needs to be plugged into the blue box is now plugged in. So, summarize. So what you should have left, what you should have left after you've plugged in everything into the blue box, again, are your two flap leads with one extra port, your two powers, your elevator, and your wide, already wide throttle lead that comes like that. So now get those into the hole on the front. Okay, so now I assembled, now that I ran, routed everything through, it's easier to get it plugged back in, so I, I screwed it together, uh, our main fuse, and now we can see everything out here, because the next step now is how do you get it all wired up to your transmitter? Um, I've flown it on a six channel Stability Plus gyro, more than enough channels, it has seven channels, which is uh, what you're gonna need for, for the OV-10. And let's get, let's show you what goes in. So first things first, your throttle, we had spoke about already, it's already wide together. So get your throttle plugged in to your receiver. Boom, one. <clears throat> now your aileron, that's gonna come out of the blue box. So remember we had four leads coming out of the blue box. So 
Grab the one that says aileron, get that plugged in. That's two. Then you're gonna have your elevator. See, you got more than enough elevator lead that it didn't need to go through the blue box. So this one was coming directly out of the center wing, which is routed all the way through to your, to your elevator in the back. Get your elevator plugged in. Now your rudder. This one is coming out of the blue box. Because remember, we plugged two rudder, or two rudder servos were plugged into the blue box, which we just did. So your rudder goes in. Then next you have your landing gear. Again, you, they, they supplied you a wire coming out of your blue box. So you're gonna plug the landing gear in because we plugged in each main gear was plugged into the blue box and the nose gear and the nose steering was also plugged into the blue box. And this lead coming out is what's gonna control all of that into your receiver. So now at this stage, you should have two open uh, leads left. One is gonna be Remember that flap channel. So they give you the flap port coming out of the blue box. Remember, this flap port, the blue box, we've now, the, the ribbon cables have the outer wing flaps attached to them. So this flap cable, if you just plug this directly into your receiver, you would only get outboard flaps because your two flap leads aren't plugged into the blue box. Your inboard flaps, they were plugged into this tri-lead. So you need to take your flap, lead from the blue box, put it into the last open slot on your tri-lead, and then the solo flap lead from the tri-lead is going to go into your flap channel. And then last things last, depending on the receiver you have, then you have your U-back. This is what's gonna give you power. If you try to plug in right now, you will not get any power to the receiver. This is what's gonna give you the power. So you get that plugged in. And you're good. But now, if you're using the Admiral Stability Plus six channel gyro, uh, what you're gonna have to do to get it bound up, unplug the flaps, because right now the u plugged into the bind port, Take out the UBEC, put it in the flap channel, so that'll give you power, and then take your bind plug, stick it in the, in the bind port section, like this, and then you get yourself bound up. So let's do that now. Okay, now we're gonna follow regular binding procedure. So I got two Admiral 4000 packs, and I'm just gonna leave those outside. And I'm gonna plug one, I'm gonna plug the one without the UBEC in first. Then I'm gonna plug the one with the U back in. And you see, that's what, give me that's what gives me power to the receiver. And then your regular bind procedure, push in the bind button, hold it back. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Boom. So now, remember, our flaps aren't plugged in. So what I'm gonna do before I do anything, is I'm gonna pull my bind plug, I'm gonna pull my power, and now I'm gonna take the UBEC out of the flat position, put it back into the bind port. And again, you'll only have to do this if you're trying to use our six channel stability plus, or six channel regular. Put the flaps back in. I'm gonna leave that right out of the aircraft for now can see it and now let's get it plugged back in and like I said I prefer to plug in the one without the UBEC first and now we're bound up we got aileron elevator rudder nose steering Coming from the blue box, our lights are all working properly. Now check the flaps, if you can see all four. Ready, three, two, all four flaps. That's what the Wise Widely does. And we can check our gear quick. And again, it's on a bit of a delay, as the blue box says. There they are. 
right down. And then, am I out of the way of the motors? There you go. And your motors work. So guys, there you have it. That is how to wire up your OV-10. Obviously, at this point, um, you would have wired up and then you're going to be building the rest of the aircraft and putting it together. But we just want to show you how to do the wiring setup because a lot of people seem to have uh, issues with that. It is a bit tedious, but the, you know, but it works, you know, so we're just, we apologize for not having that in the manual as, uh, as it was, but we're in the process of updating that manual and we got this video out as soon as possible, hopefully to help you guys on your way. All right, guys, so that's a little addendum to the original video. Now, from this point on, obviously, you could probably bind your aircraft up at that point, but you're not going to have the rest of your aircraft built. The whole idea is the first step you should do, get everything plugged into the blue box, at least, not necessarily the receiver, but uh, then proceed with the rest of the video and get your OV-10 built. All right, guys, step one, as far as the manual goes, tells you to install the main middle section of the wing into the middle portion of your fuselage. Now, the manual does not tell you here that you should plug everything into the blue box yet. So this is where I was gonna help you guys out. I ended up installing it and screwing it down. Then I ended up going right to step two, which was installing the two booms to the middle section of the wing. Once I got to that portion, I realized, oh, I'm not gonna be able to have access to that blue box easily through the fuselage. My hand is just a little too large to get in there and it's a whole lot easier to do that first. So we're gonna start this video out. The first thing you wanna do before you screw in the main middle section to the fuselage is you're gonna unscrew your uh, battery tray because the blue box is attached in the back of the battery tray. If you just take out these four screws, lift your battery tray up to the hole on the back of the middle section of the fuselage, it's gonna be so much easier right now. The first thing you should do is get everything plugged in. You wanna watch out for the polarization on things. You're gonna plug in your LEDs in there. You're gonna plug in your flaps. You're gonna plug in your elevator servos. Everything that needs to go into the blue box is right there for you, and it should look like this when you're done. So now once you have it all plugged in, all you have to do, guys, is take four of those three by 12 millimeter screws that you see here, and you're gonna screw that down. Two of them, uh, two of the screws in the front, they're actually underneath part of the hatch. So you can see it gets covered, and that completes the canopy on top. So again, just four screws will attach the main wing to the middle fuselage, and now we can get on to installing the booms. So now the booms, guys, very easy here. You're just gonna make all your servo connections. Everything is labeled properly. So once you make your servo connections and make sure everything is dropped into the, into the hole there, you're just gonna use five screws for each boom. So 10 total, and they will be the same types of screws you just used for the middle fuselage. So it'll be five three by 12 millimeter screws that you see here, and they all get screwed into these nicely molded plastic pieces, and everything is nice and snug once you're done with that. Moving on, step three is gonna be the install of your horizontal stabilizer. The first thing you're gonna do is make your connections, connect the LED, connect the elevator servo, make sure your polarity is correct, then you're just gonna snugly fit the uh, horizontal stabilizer between the vertical stabs, and then two screws on each side will get it done. And again, nicely molded plastic where your screw inserts. Now the next step is gonna be installing your propellers. I wouldn't do this yet until you have your aircraft bounded up. So what I would do, save the install of the propeller and spinner till the very end. You never wanna power on your aircraft until you have everything centered and such. There's no reason you need to have the props on yet. So I would skip right ahead and get working on your control linkages. So get the plane bound up, make sure your throws are going in the right direction, make sure your servos are centered, and attach all the control linkages that you're gonna need to attach. And this page of the manual will show you all the control linkages and where they should go. Your two longest ones, they're for your rudder. They're 158 millimeters. Then you have five 58 millimeter linkages. Four of them are gonna be for your flaps, two inboard, two outboard, and one is gonna be for your elevator. And then the two 65 millimeter length ones, they'll be for your ailerons. So get them all attached, and then you can move on to the next step. Now at this portion, you have a mostly built up center portion. This is gonna be how your uh, OV-10 can travel. 
From here on out, the only thing you'll probably ever have to take apart anymore are these outside wing tips. So this is where you're just gonna use the other four remaining screws that you have. Those are three by six millimeter. They look like standard wing uh, screws for any other flight line or free wing bird. They look differently than the other screws that we just used. You will attach the ribbon cable. You'll use the carbon tubes. You see where that goes, it should be very simple. And once you have that on, slide it in and drive in all four screws and your outer wing portions are now attached to your OV-10 Bronco. So now at this point, whether you wanna do your prop first or your peripherals, we'll get started with the peripherals. So you have a lot of antennas, guys, that you're gonna put around. You have the counterweights, which are gonna go on the top and the bottom of your elevator surface. You have antennas under the booms. You have the machine guns, they can go into the sponsons. You have the antenna on top of the fuselage. You have two little antennas on top of the back portion of the vertical stabilizers. You have the exhaust on the outside of the motors on the booms that you gotta glue on. You gotta glue on the pylon for your external fuel tank under the bottom. You could glue in your sponsons of course too. And now anytime I glue foam on foam, remember to score the foam on both sides before you apply the glue. That's just gonna create more surface area and make sure you get a nice tight fit. Then here, if you just wanna see it, you can attach all your ordnance. So those rocket pods again slide on with the railing system. And then once you know your, your middle pylon for the fuel tank is glued in and tight, you could uh, slap the fuel tank on. Those just held magnetically, look great. So once you have all the peripherals done, now here's where we can do our propellers. And again, remember you have a reverse propeller and a standard propeller, and you want them to counter rotate inwards. So just make sure you do that as you attach the propellers. You have the back plate for the spinner, then the propeller will go on over that and everything fits snugly. Then you'll put on the nut that comes on top of it. Then you put your spinners over the top and then you're gonna screw in one of those three by six millimeter screws that came in the bag with the uh, spinners. It's the only screw that's different from all the others. And once you're done with that, guys, there you have it, a fully assembled OV-10 Bronco A, and she looks awesome. So now let's go through the features and plug her in. So there you have it guys, that's a fully built OV-10 Bronco. And again, just that one little tip, make sure you plug all those parts in first. I realize that after the fact, you're never gonna get your hand in there to see how the blue box is laid out. Do the blue box first, make those connections. Then the rest goes together pretty simply. Um, the only thing is, again, having the two booms, you may need like to use some of the foam like from the uh, aircraft to balance things out as you place it on, especially if you're building it by yourself, or maybe you grab your wife and don't tell her you bought the new plane, but uh, just ask her to help you assemble it for a friend. Um, you may need a second person. I had to have Alex come over for just one of the parts to assemble it, but guys, either way, once you have uh, all that wiring done, you're never gonna have to go back in there again, hopefully, and it's all nice assembly, uh, disassembly from just the outer wing portion, so she's gonna be really nice to transport. But I wanted to show you guys um, one of our favorite twin engines from Flightline is the P-38, way before my time came out, but I just wanna show her on the table next to another uh, twin engine from Flightline, because I know probably one of the first things you guys saw was 1400 millimeter wingspan. Oh, that might be a little small. And really, wingspan is all relative to the size of and the type of aircraft you have. The OV-10, just by nature, the beast, um, if you're going for this scale. Again, these two aircrafts are different scales to each other. They are not scale, but I just wanted to show you the presence of one versus the other. So you can see clearly that she is not a small bird at all. Anyone who's seen the uh, P-38, if I put the nose to the nose, look how much longer the tail is. I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna walk this forward a little bit. Um, on the P-38, and this is the nose to the nose without the pedo tube. If I go by the pedo tube, <laughs> then you're even farther back, but you can see she sits bigger. She, uh, she is just very, very comparable and a very, very nice size. And you can see some of the upgrades, if you will, from one of the older models. One thing about the P-38, it had come with the plastic landing gear, although nice that it's white, looks good. Um, but now you're getting what would be the upgraded gear on older Flightline models. You're getting that on the OV-10 standard. So that's really nice. And let me just show you the gear. Look at how she 
sits on those mains, all trailing link suspension on the nose. Nice big tires, as I said, similar. They actually look like they might even be the same tires on both, which is fine. That's pretty standard. Guys might upgrade to Robarts and things like that. But overall, you could just get the idea that the OV10, despite 1400 millimeter on wingspan, she is no slouch as far as size. So let me get the P38 off the table and out of here, and then we'll just walk around the OV10 and finish up this video. All right, guys, let's finish up this OV10 Bronco. Let's walk around her. I think first things first, I'm gonna open up the canopy. Haven't done that yet, so you can see all the space inside the OV10 Bronco. And again, plenty of room for some larger packs. We're gonna be flying it, or I've already flown it twice now, on uh, 4,000 Admiral 4S packs. And I was getting perfect CG with them positioned right up against the uh, right up against the, the forward part of the tray, which is nice. You have easy access to your servo and your landing gear, uh, nose gear right under there. And again, a majority of your rat's nest, as far as wiring, is gonna be all pushed far to the back. So there's definitely length there. There's definitely height there where you can get another battery. Uh, maybe maybe five thousands in there. I think she's gonna have no problem holding a little extra weight But I was getting about I think we did two I did two flights the only time I was able to get her out and I was landing at eight minutes seven minutes And I had 30 35 percent left on the battery So, you know, she's not the type of aircraft that you're gonna need to motor all around She's one to be enjoyed She looks stunning in the sky as you can see in these slow mos that I'm gonna make Alex put over the top But she looks awesome as far as the canopy goes you have nice two pilots in there, which is great. Beautiful detail. They put the stickers inside. They painted the inside a darker color, which is nice. Looks really good. I think there's some plastic and some wood, so hopefully, uh, I think it's lined in plastic, so you won't get as much bubbling. I think the only bubbling we had got being out there were just on the seat, seemed to be made of foam, but uh, nothing that you know isn't gonna happen over time anyway. But again, you also get magnets, and you have the uh, plywood plate so that it, uh, the wood, you know, fits in there nice. You never have to worry about your canopy exiting on you. Uh, one of the things I want to show you guys, talk CG. So the CG is listed on the book and you can measure if you want to, but you don't have to. Let me take the batteries out of there quick before I plug it in. I'll plug it back in in a second, but I want to show you they did mold the CG marks underneath uh, the wing. They are right on the inside portion of that main center wing. And again, I hit that CG spot very easily, very easily to do with two thumbs. You're not gonna have any problem there. Uh, she looks really good. She was made for those 4S 4000 packs. As far as, again, some of those peripheral bits we wanted to talk about, I could take off a wing, but you've already seen it on the video. Let me grab a screwdriver. I'm gonna take off one side of the wing and we can speed this up. There you go. So you remove the two screws and your wing is gonna come right out with a ribbon cable. I mean, couldn't be simpler, easy to take with you. First time I ever took the wing off. But you see, looks nice and it's gonna be a lot uh, thinner when you're gonna put it in your car, your truck, or wherever you wanna transport it. And even if you had to remove the uh, horizontal, it's just another another four screws. You could take that off if you didn't want, you know, if this was too high or gonna hit something, you could even probably remove the booms if you have to for long transports, but for quick to the field, this should be able to easily get it done. So let me get this wing attached again, then I'm gonna plug it in and let's take a look at the lights, show you how the gear works. All right, wings back on. I'm gonna put the batteries back in, get her plugged in for you. So the way I've been doing it is I put the battery leads facing aft when I put this in my plane. I'm not gonna tape it. I'm not gonna Velcro it down for right now. Let's turn on our transmitter. Let's make our connections. One, two. canopy all nice and good now you can see right off the bat your light so we have the nose light on which looks awesome at night and that'll turn on and off I believe with the landing gear 
And that's what the blue box is for, helps you with that. You have your nav lights, green on the right, red on the left. You got your strobe on the top of the horizontal stab. And you got your red strobe underneath on the bottom. You can see that there. Should be right in front of the fuel tank. Got it? All right. So looking good, let me drop the gear. Pick her up, like so. Here we go. Nice, now it does have the little blue box delay, as you come to expect, but look at that mean profile sitting there. I love that. I just love the shape of the OV-10. I loved it with the ProFly one that I've been flying around, the Balsa, and now I'm excited to have it in foam, but I also love that, unlike the Balsa version, you're getting those ordnance on there and it just makes the, the Bronco look even meaner and I've seen so many obviously there's been a lot of variations of the Bronco out there so she's carried a lot of different stuff but I've even seen ones with I think they have outer pylon uh outer pylons on some of them like they really can stock them up and they're being used like crazy even to this day which makes the Bronco even cooler because it's both an old and you know still kind of a newer uh aircraft which is fantastic but the landing gear again looks good. All your peripherals, those guns, they're glued in and they're pushed into the foam. They had like a little spike on the end that you push in with some glue and then your ordnance, they just come off nicely and they can attach their, uh, their center. You can attach them either way. They look the same. So they could just go on there. Not gonna try to attach it. As far as your propellers, I'm gonna spin her up just a little bit. There you go. And they counter rotate inwards which is nice give you a nice balance on a model like this and then one thing i will say guys make sure you calibrate your escs especially on any aircraft you want to calibrate your esc anyway but especially on a twin blade right out of the box if one of them isn't timed the same way as the other if you go to maiden you may push yourself right over into the ground and then think what did i do wrong and that's the thing if you're going to calibrate your escs i'm going to show you how to do that right now real quick take your aircraft after you have it all bound up and everything set unplug tight connection tight connection there it is sexy 60 sexy 60 connectors on the esc now your transmitter's on plane is unplugged take your transmitter this will work with any transmitter throttle to the sky plug in one and two Listen to the beats, bring it down. And now your ESCs are calibrated. Couldn't be any easier than that, and that'll make sure that they're timed correctly. So that's a very quick way to do it. You can do that once every 15 or so, 20 flights. Sometimes you should just, it's something you should get in the habit of. Maybe even as a pre-flight check, it takes no effort to do it, and it'll, uh, it could save you from something bad happening. So guys, I think, that's about it. Um, we tried to show you everything I could possibly show you in this unboxing and assembly, guys. If you're watching this video now, I'm not sure if we have a pre-order up or if this was an announcement or if it's available already today. So uh, just stay tuned. I'll have the links in the description of this video um, on where to go. And if you follow us on social media, we'll obviously, uh, our emailer will let you know when and where you can get them. But um, that'll do it, guys, for the unboxing and assembly. If you have any questions, head over to Hobby Squawk. We have a thread going for the OV-10 Bronco there, or leave a question uh, on the comment section of this video. I'll happily try to answer anything else I can that I may have missed in this video, but I think we pretty much covered it all. She looks gorgeous. It's awesome to have a North American Rockwell OV-10 in foam. I believe it might be the first time ever in foam, but... If it's not, it's definitely the best time ever in foam because Flightline did it, and uh, we're so happy to finally see it. So, guys, that'll do it for me. Alex, thank you so much for filming. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember to stay tuned uh, to our live shows every Friday at 12 o'clock on YouTube. That'll do it for us. See you later.